Right Honourable Lord Mayor of York, Councillor Sonia Crisp, Lord Mayor's Consort, Sheriff's Lady, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the third York Civic Trust public speaking competition. Our judges are Keith Hayton, Councillor Julie Gunnell, and our head judge, Daryl Buttery, an expert on debating. And the winners will have this treasury. I wonder who's going to win it tonight. Third place goes to Westfield. Did you know Toby? Absolutely love toilets. Nothing to do with them. Strange, but Handy's York is the only UK city to have its own toilet tour. The first public toilet was located in an arch of the old Ouse Bridge. This led to the saying, bridges are built for wise men to go over and fools to go under. You can imagine the risk of walking under. It has been discovered that the Romans in York had working toilets. The Romans used sponges on sticks to wipe their bottoms and the sponges were covered in vinegar. This may sound dirty, but it made sure that the hands did not come in contact with the bottom. Ooh. 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 What are you doing, Leah? Well, York's haunted, didn't you know? Everyone knows that. We're supposed to tell these fine people things they don't know. Wait, just trying to get it open, and it's open. Mm. What are you doing now, Leah? Well, I'm eating York's heritage, Nestle of course, including many others, like the world famous round trees. I never knew York was so strange. I wonder what else we don't know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So the second prize goes to Huntington. Guy Fawkes was a Roman Catholic and in the times he was living, he very unfairly had to practice his religion in secret. Fair. Well. Exactly. And he was brave enough to stand up for what he believed in by tackling the government at the time who were persecuting people for their beliefs. And he was hung, drawn and quartered. And let's face it, brutality and blood and gore are always remembered. And why, pray tell, is that good for York? Tourism, my friend. Tourism. <laughs> I'll tell you straight. Guy Fawkes is a friend of York because he allows us to celebrate bonfire night every year. We will agree to disagree on that one. You name someone better than a true friend of York, if you can. Two words. Joseph Roundtree. I'm listening. If it involves chocolate, I'm listening. Well, it does and it doesn't. Roundtree was and actually still is a true friend of the city, a philanthropist, but even as a powerful businessman, he was deeply interested in improving the quality of lives for his employees. So, did he give them free chocolate? As much as they wanted? No. He did, however, set up a housing trust to keep them all in homes, a social service trust to ensure their health was looked after, and he created a community for his workers, all of which still exist today. It is true what you say that blood, gut and horror have all put York on the map, but actually so is integrity, kindness and humanity, thanks to people like Joseph Roundtree. Joseph Roundtree does indeed have an epic legacy, and will be remembered forever as a genuine friend of the city. Famous people from York, friends or foe? It takes all kinds of people to make the world go round. Would the story of Robin Hood be as gripping without the malevolent influence of the Sheriff of Nottingham? Would George be as saintly without his dragon? Would the school be the same without me? <coughs> oh, and you. York has been the backdrop for all that is bad and good in our national history. From the arrival of Christianity with Constantine the Great, to the plot to kill the king, which started here in our cobbled streets with Guy Fawkes. I thought he was a true villain. Don't we put him on the top of our bonfires each year? He tried to work the Houses of Parliament and kill King James I. So, does York have any true heroes? Well... York does have one famous philanthropist to be proud of. Joseph Ranch was a Quaker 
and he was trying to come up with a drink to rival the town's favourite afterwork tipple, beer. Drinking large amounts of alcohol each day after work was having a negative impact on family life. The Joseph Rowntree Charitable Trust still carries on his good work today. So a great man with great intentions. A success story from York. Mm, I'm not so sure that doctors would agree that he was a true hero. <laughs> the United Kingdom is the world's third highest consumer of chocolate after Germany and Switzerland. We ate 10.3 kilograms of chocolate per person in this country last year. Really? Well, not in my house. Thanks a lot, Mum. <laughs> You've got a lot to thank your mum for. You know what they say about moderation. A bit of what you fancy does you good. Chocolate pickers wear big knickers. <laughs> Let's leave that there. We have only had time to examine two individuals from York's history today, but they are in stark contrast to each other. Both, however, have made a huge impact in our local and national history. High five. <laughs> and the first prize goes to St Wilfred's.